Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to attempt to cure the ticking sound the Miata makes with some new lifters. In front of me are the new lifters for the NA Miata. Now, these Miatas use hydraulic lifters like a lot of modern cars, and over time, either because of wear and tear or gunk buildup, they get really loud, especially when the engine's hot. Now, this is a rebuilt engine, so it shouldn't have this problem already, unless they reuse some old lifters or improperly installed the lifters when they did the rebuild. Now, the problem with hydraulic lifters is, as they age and get filled with the gunk or they get damage done, air gets into the system and other things and allows them to make a lot more noise and do additional damage to themselves. If that's the case with these lifters, I need to replace them anyway, so we have the new ones. Because this involves pulling the valve cover and the cams off the engine, we need to go ahead and make sure that if we're going that deep, we have options in case the ones there can't simply be cleaned. Now, the way these function are, oil pressure fills the center of the unit and it basically functions like a damper and a return spring at the same time. But even without oil in them, the center section should spring up and down because there is a central spring just enough to return it to the up position. When we got these new lifters in the mail, they were completely stuck in the down position. We had to dismantle all of them and reassemble them with the springs more properly seated and the center sections freed up enough that we could then verify they worked and prime them with oil. Now, putting them in an oil bath, pumping them until the air comes out of them, primes them with oil so that when they are first installed in the car, they will start out much quieter and greatly reduce the chance of an air bubble permanently becoming trapped in one of them, causing them to just be loud forever. The oil bath also gives the oil time to adhere to all the surfaces, making it a little bit better for the break-in and protection of the surfaces during the installation. When you start by just grabbing brand new ones and dropping them in the engine, especially in the condition that these were where they were stuck in the down position, there's no guarantee that they will ever free themselves. And if they do, there's no guarantee you'll ever get the air completely out of them, so they may be noisy even though they're brand new. So let's go ahead, get to the engine, and pull the valve cover. Game begin.
there you have it. As you saw, the lifter noise is pretty much gone. Now, this car is far quieter than any other NA Miatas that I've heard. And it's due to both the new lifters, the old lifters had some discoloration, so they definitely were a problem. My guess would be somebody installed new lifters, didn't make sure they were freed up, just threw them in there hoping the oil pressure would free them up, and it didn't on all of them. And that's part of why they had big wear marks on them from not constantly staying in contact with the cam. Now, this also led me to change the oil. We've changed her from her 1030 Pens oil to 5W40 Motul. The 540 Motul is the same oil that I run in the SR240Z project. By lowering the first number and increasing the second number, you've changed the cold performance of the oil to function more like a thinner oil and the hot performance of the oil to function more like a thicker oil. In a turbocharged car, this gets the oil to the turbo faster when it's cold and being started initially, and it also keeps the oil flowing and functioning like a thicker oil when all the extra heat is put into the oil by the turbo. In the case of the Miata, it was suffering similar problems, so I believed the same solution would work, and it did. It's a lot quieter with this oil in there. So if you're struggling with lifter noise, I would also probably suggest going to something like a 540 Motul. Now, overall, this project isn't super difficult. Just make sure you retime your engine properly when you're done. We used various tricks. You may have seen zip ties. You may have seen a screwdriver drop down through cylinder one so that we could verify top dead center, things like that. Overall, this is a non-interference engine, so you don't have a lot to worry about. It definitely won't run right if you don't get the timing back on. So make sure you're paying attention. Thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Game over.